sure it's live. What is up, everyone? I am Charlie Shrem, and you are you are all so lucky because you are you are. It's Tuesday morning, and we're here with the co-founder and CEO of Nexo, Anthony Trenchev. Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Charlie, thank you so much for having me. That's not really why I was saying that they're lucky. They're lucky because <laughs> we're going by. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. I woke up this morning, so I couldn't sleep last night. I woke up this morning and uh, I kept I kept seeing uh, Bitcoin at 48, 49, and then it was like at 49.5, and then I went back to sleep. And then I kid you not, I woke back up maybe 40 minutes later and I saw the tweets. Yeah, it hit 50K. And then I saw the chart go up and then back down. I'm like, no, I missed it. I just wanted to see live. I just wanted to see it live. Yeah. Well, I had the suspicion that this has been a diversion tactic, a new all time high the day we are recording and streaming so that this distracts people yeah. from our session is what it is. It's a distraction. You've been you've been Nexo Finance and, and you have been on the forefront of, of this industry for so long. And I'm going to I'm going to make a statement that you and I are, are going to agree with. But a lot of people aren't. And I, and I you know, I, I can give my opinion, but you'll give yours, too. But just just before I, I say that, um, to give everyone a little bit of background of you prior to starting Nexo, you were the chief legal officer at MDL, one of the leading. I didn't know this. One of the leading fashion companies in Bulgaria. And you were a member of, of Bulgarian parliament. We've talked about that before. And. And if, if uh, any listeners want to hear an expanded uh, talk with, with Tony, we did one uh, on untoldstories.com. You can listen to it. But since then, it's been a wild ride for Nexo. Uh, super, super wild. But before that, I want to say one thing. And this is what's a little controversial. Um, all the other Bitcoin bull markets that, that I've been through, I've always felt that Bitcoin has led it and everything else has followed. Yeah. This yeah. one. I truly, truly believe that one of the reasons that Bitcoin and Ethereum are rising because they've been around for so long is because the rest of the industry for the first time is pushing it forward. And now we have an industry with killer apps. You look at decentralized finance and, and every single product and service. You're essentially if you just look at Nexo that and not the rest of the industry, just Nexo. I mean, it's a whole rebuilding of the whole financial world, really. That's what we like to think of ourselves, but, you know, uh, much appreciated coming this from you who have been like in Bitcoin from the very, very start and you've seen it all, you survived it all. So it's truly humbling to hear that from you. So um, what have what have you been working on in the past three months? I know that uh, since we last talked. Uh, one of the things that we talked about doing was having a, an internal exchange inside of Nexo. You launched that. But before we get into that, what were the humble beginnings of Nexo? And and what can all its users and all customers do now within the app that they really couldn't do with their traditional banking world before? Well, first of all, <laughs> they couldn't take out a loan against their yeah. crypto, which was, uh, you know, a no-brainer and like this was the inception of Nexo. It is uh, actually one of the other co-founders, Costa Kanchev, who came up with this idea because he himself was looking to borrow against his Bitcoin uh, 2014-15-ish, something, uh, uh, you know, around that time. And, uh, you know, he told me the, the story. There were all these crazy folders on uh, Bitcoin talk, uh, you know, subtopics, subreddits, even though it's on Reddit, but uh, yeah, the concept is the same of people exchanging without any sort of custody and without being ever sure they're going to uh, see their Bitcoin. And they were essentially transacting in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, getting out loans, uh, you know, against their Bitcoin. And we figured out there's certainly a better way to do it in an institutionalized uh, manner so that you can have fair confidence, uh, can be fairly confident you're getting your Bitcoin back regardless of what the market is doing. And uh, this was the very, very humble beginnings of Nexo. And that's what uh, our main product to this day is, you know, being able to give our customers access to their tied up liquidity in crypto without actually having to sell it. A great proposition <laughs> if you look at the, uh, the price action this past few years. 
and obviously the earned product which came as an auxiliary to that product these are like the fundamentals and we have been building on top of that um, as you mentioned the exchange uh, just got released in less than a month uh, so we actually held our promise <laughs> in terms of timelines and this has been appreciated by the market and by the public why has it taken like the credit and capital markets of the world so long to figure out that people retail users not just institutions want the ability to securitize an asset borrow against it because most of the time you don't want to sell that asset for various reasons whether you think that asset's going to keep going up or you don't want to uh, have to deal and this is one of the biggest things for me one of the reasons that nexo helped me a lot is that when you're borrowing against your your bitcoin as opposed to selling it or you're borrowing against any crypto and this is the biggest thing and, and thank you. you you helped me out so much in the past tax year was that when you're borrowing against your crypto it's a whole different tax strategy uh, especially in the u.s than it is when you're selling it but but really that that doesn't answer the that doesn't go back to my question is that up until so so i'm like a a, a little bit of like a, a a lending and and capital markets geek and i like to see how loans are taken out and how people can get mortgages and I remember before Rocket Mortgage came out, I had a friend trying to explain to me that having a, a simple way to get a mortgage easily doesn't exist yet. And I said, how could that not exist? So when I first took out a loan on Nexo against my Bitcoin, I had never actually taken out a loan against anything ever before. So you set the standard. You set the standard of like, this is how all loans should be. It should be seconds. Why, Absolutely. Why isn't that still the case in the rest of the world? Well, you know, revolutions actually take longer than revolutionaries expect them to. That's one of the things that we had to learn, uh, you know, in the past uh, three years is really revolutions take longer. It is, uh, especially when you engage and you're in this micro universe and you see everyone yeah. uh, around you using Bitcoin and you're like, why isn't the rest of the world uh, doing that? So it's a couple of challenges. First of all, like it took a while until the general public and institutions finally uh, started thinking of Bitcoin and accepting it as an asset class that is here to stay. Uh, I think that's you know, arguably a done deal by now with Elon Musk and MicroStrategy and PayPal and Paul Tudor yeah. Jones and just about anyone, you know, dipping their toes into uh, to, uh, crypto. That was one of the obstacles. Uh, and then the second is just building the, the infrastructure around it. I remember like when we started out, there were a couple of guys looking to pretty much do the same thing that we did. And they thought, oh, it's the easiest thing in the world. You know, just because the business case is very simple and you can explain it and it actually makes sense, which is a rarity in this world where not every business case and not every company that raises money actually yeah. has a business case that makes sense. That, but that from, go from there to the execution to actually you being able to, you know, come on a self-serving platform and get your loan in a matter of, if not seconds, then definitely minutes. It, 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 takes, uh, it takes quite a bit of, um, uh, of engineering ingenuity. <laughs> so shout out to the dev is that team. What that, yeah. Is uh, that what that office is called? The, the engineering and ingenuity office, the, the internal economics team? Right, yeah, uh, something like that. So I wanted just to give props to our wonderful dev team. We got about 60 people now. We have an amazing CTO, uh, Vasil Petrov. He's, uh, he's really a terrific guy. Couldn't have done it without him, just like from the architectural uh, perspective of, you know, visualizing everything and then putting this into code, which actually works and God forbid, but until now at least has never been hacked it is quite an endeavor so it's, it's a whole compound of different things that make it not so easy for uh, anyone to really replicate the model not only that but you figured out a way to de-risk so uh, uh, it's always been about custodial and non-custodial and i've always been a diehard of like your own keys, your own crypto. Yeah. But I also understand the world that we live in and there's a risk and, and you also want to uh, borrow against. But you've taken a whole nother approach. You've said, hey, we understand there's custodial risk here. So we're going to really push for and you've said you're trying to get a billion dollars in covered insurance. I think you're like at ha like four hundred million dollars in, in insurance now because you're not saying that we're unhackable. You're saying there's risk 
and we're just going to make sure that we're not the ones holding those bags. Well, everything, you know, has its risks and uh, things that are better and worse in both custodial and non-custodial, you know. If you forget your keys or you lose them or you have an accident yeah. and you haven't, you know, really uh, <laughs> uh, figure out a plan for posterity and your, uh, you know, uh, the people around you to have access to that, you could be actually much worse. So, you know, every it's 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 you you got trade offs and you got to live with them. On the other hand, you know, with uh, non custodial, you, you get interest on it up to eight percent in Bitcoin, up to twelve percent for fiat currencies. Uh, you know, we are trying to actually find a middle way where, yes, it's not going to be uh, non-custodial for the foreseeable future until we have, you know, the, the necessary means, which last of but not least are the necessary code and bulletproof code, which, you know, some of the DeFi, is, well, a lot of the DeFi guys have been yeah. hacked in a massive way. So we've opted for another way, which is this bridge between traditional finance and the crypto world, and to you know balance that off with the insurance. It's uh, currently at 375 million, the custodial uh, insurance that we have in place, or so just under 400 million. We are looking to bump it up to a billion. And, you know, this uh, goes a long way to ensure peace of mind to everyone. This is something that has changed. We had 100 million last time. Uh, we talked a few growing months later. As the we are, growing. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we're on a good path here. That's, that's a really, really amazing thing. Um, you're, I'm looking at, at the Nexo app and I see that uh, your, your teams are hard at work. Your, your token economics teams are hard at work and the price has definitely shown it. But I got an email last week. Uh, talking about governance vote. That's exciting. Like everyone's talking about decentralized finance, but they're forgetting the whole like governance part of it, which was the whole reason that we got into this thing in the first place. So tell me about that email. Like, What can I expect? What type of, of governance votes are there? Uh, the communities involved. It, everyone got so excited. I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, um, I'm not positioned to disclose like super details around it because like, uh, you know, we are... Uh, at a concept level where we are figuring out the exact details. But the goal is to have, uh, you know, exactly this, uh, what Bitcoin's promise and decentralized promise and blockchain's promise has been uh, a new way to make decisions for us as individuals with regards to our finance and then as a company uh, with regards to, uh, you know, the company, uh, the, 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 the corporate decisions, if you will, which will go a long way in uh, getting back, uh, you know, our uh, sovereignty uh, over our finances. And we want to be pioneers yes. at that as well. Uh, you know, just like we are looking to have some DeFi aspects to the Nexo business, so we'll have an incorporation of the, of the governance token, which will give a better say of our customers. I think we've done one of the finer yeah. jobs of listening to the community and actually implementing what they want, but this will be another step in that direction, which will further uh, cement that path. What do you think of all these companies putting uh, Bitcoin and, and some other cryptos too on their on their balance sheets. Like, what's the strategy there? These companies are companies that are sitting on, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in cash, let's just say, or euros or whatever it is. Yep. And now they're buying into into Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever. So now it's like it's 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 a different type of asset. What's and you could say that they're all, you know, cuckoo and that we all love crypto and we're all religious crazies and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, there's a risk officer, there's a compliance officer, there's someone in there saying, what are we doing here? So like Elon Musk buying a billion and a half worth of Bitcoin. What's the strategy for him? Is he looking at Bitcoin to just be an appreciation over a long term? But if you know you being the executive of these major companies before, like what's that strategy? Can you give us a little bit of insight? 
Well, I can give you my two cents on it and uh, we'll tweet out to Elon and see whether he agrees with my take. Yeah, uh, I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, the same here. Like, uh, he, his mind uh, has been a, a, a hard one to crack, you know. <laughs> it's easier to figure what, what uh, other people are up to, but definitely not Elon. I think there's been a, a lot of pressure internally from, uh, you know, the members of, uh, of if it's an investment fund, the investment fund is if it's, uh, an LP by the limited partners of a company from the shareholders uh, that, you know, the vast majority of the investors have almost entirely missed out on the Bitcoin rally this past decade. And as we know, uh, and I have been repeating that uh, until I got hoarse. It has been the best performing asset of the past decade. So there's a lot of pressure of how could you possibly miss that you're supposed to be the smartest guys in the room. So this is a lot of pressure which just uh. comes from the headlines. That's what I think. But then again, fundamentally, I do think that Bitcoin's fundamentals are very, very strong given that it is, uh, you know, one of two uh, truly scarce assets, one, the other one being gold, but, you know, Bitcoin being perhaps a better version of it. Uh, so, you know, in a situation where you have trillions and trillions of dollars being put out and constantly printed by the central banks, it's a no-brainer that, uh, you know, a company like, uh, like, like Tesla, which has $165 billion of excess cash, if I got my figures right, allocates a portion of it to Bitcoin. And, you know, a single percentage digit, even if it goes to zero, you know, they will issue a few more shares. And the they, they will, it's definitely a risk worth taking because the, the risk is to the upside. Now, am I certain we're going to pierce through here and go to 100K in a straight line? No, I'm not. I mean, I like you worry over, uh, you know, short term volatility of uh, excesses of irrational exuberance to borrow from Greenspan here, yeah. this expression. Uh, ultimately, and down the line, I'm a Bitcoin bull, but this is going to be a unsmooth road ahead we're gonna see some some crazy volatility uh the the higher these things go the bigger the market gets the more efficient it needs to create itself it's like okay so you ever take like one of those bouncy balls and you're you, those like when you're a child you have those little balls yeah. you put it in a box it bounces for a while but eventually it settles itself that that's the market Mar if you if we let markets be efficient they will eventually become efficient but, but obviously not in the time frame that we need because they need to figure themselves out. Stress testing, things like that. When that box gets bigger very quickly, that ball is going to be bouncing the shit around a lot. And that's what you're going to see, that crazy volatility. But these companies that are putting, like, okay, so they all of a sudden, like, he has a billion and a half on his balance sheet. You could see an easily, like, you can see a correction in the 30,000s right now. And I, I, I wouldn't blink an eye because it's normal. You wouldn't. But would they, would their accountants be like, shit, we just lost hundreds of millions of dollars overnight because China tried to ban Bitcoin again? Yeah. Well, most likely, but then <laughs> uh, specifically Tesla, uh, Tesla, they have the right CEO for that who say, don't you worry, guys, I know what I'm doing. Just trust me on this one and they'll yeah. write it out. <laughs> but you also uh, just to build upon uh, what you said about uh, the market volatility and this analogy with the boxes, which I really liked and I'm going to use from henceforth, just giving you the heads up. Uh, consider also that crypto is the only truly free market right now where the forces of supply and demand and market corrections can actually play out because we do not have a Fed, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, unless you count you're right, you're the, right, te right. the tether right. guys, you know, sometimes just kidding here. But, you know, every now and then they <laughs> appear to be uh, yeah. having our back. Just kidding here. Uh, but, you know, this, uh, it truly is fascinating because like in the stock markets, I really think in, 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 in dollar terms, they will not let uh, the equity markets fall too much, you know, uh, 3,000 points in the S&P uh, 500 means one thing now and five years from now, but in dollar terms, 
uh, you know, I don't think we're going to see huge crashes. That's not true for Bitcoin because and crypto in general, because you don't have this buyer of last resort who comes in and starts pumping money. It's not the way it works. So, you know, I get a lot of calls from friends who are finally, you know, even the biggest doubters are, you know, finally saying I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. So does, this does make me nervous. Now, not as nervous as if we had someone like uh, Rubini coming on TV and saying he's long Bitcoin. But, yeah, uh, you know, there are some signs on the wall that uh, this rally might slowly be overheating a little bit. Market forces could be smart contracted well that's a stupid question what if like okay i i forget who said it it may be it may, it may have been Keynes himself but i forget who said that during the good times you're supposed to save and the bad times you're supposed to spend so like we're printing money now but yeah. the idea behind the economic theory like is that during the times that you're doing really well and there's uh, excess and everything you're supposed to pull money back out back out of circuit we don't do that obviously we just no, go we the don't one way. do that anymore and there's also we can't audit this situation. We don't know who the Federal Reserve is. There's there's all these negatives, but like over time, I'm always thinking these ideas. Though, what if so? What if there was a way that a blockchain could actually come out with, and, and obviously not on the Bitcoin blockchain, but on a different test blockchain somewhere, uh, maybe Litecoin or whatever, where if the price goes up a certain point, you know, it pulls money out. It 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 does like a stock merger or something like a coin merger and then if if the price is going down too much it does the opposite effect kind of like a decentralized central bank built on top of the chain itself would that be an anti-thesis to anarcho-capitalism and crypto in general or does uh, does are we opposed to like central banking because they're central I, I, I kind of find myself. Yeah, but my who, who would be taking the decision like pre-programmed and somebody takes know. a vote on it or do I don't you know. Imagine Maybe it? the whole community, the whole chain itself, if like 51% of the chain agrees on something, but then you're getting into like our miners and our nodes. We're not economists, you yeah. know, so why are we making decisions? It should be just be no market forces. So I guess I answered my own question. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens every now and then. Now, it's, it's a good question. It's a hard one. And like, even now, you know, theoretically, uh, if there's consensus among the miners, you know, we could expand uh, yeah. the, 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 the total supply of Bitcoin if above 51 percent agree to that. But I think that's precisely the charm of Bitcoin and crypto that we have this concept, uh, you know, of built in uh, deflationary uh, forces hard coded into sure. the code and you rely on that you know, remaining permanent. And that's why we saw this price appreciation. For me, this is where the value proposition is because it is finite. And that's why you see people, but, but, but you know, truth to the matter is there is some like, you know, this withdrawal by the whales, it sort of yeah. serves like- It kind of happens on its own anyways. Yeah. Uh, so well, like serves... all these companies taking Bitcoin out of off exchanges, like there aren't yeah. a lot of Bitcoin on exchanges anymore because of that. So it's kind of does it on its own. The other thing that I'm a little bit concerned of uh, recently is fractional reserve banking because like something what, uh, you know, some of the guys who do some sort of lending have engaged uh, in, uh, you know, uh, unsecured lending and we don't do that because it brings back the issue of fractional reserves banking. You know, there is a bunch of Bitcoin and it's simultaneously at the balance sheet of several companies and then we're sort of back to square one. And, uh, you know, I don't well, really know what this huge, is. This is what's going to, I think that, that what you just said, and I, I didn't say it, is going to cause it, like I've been saying it so much, is going to cause a huge liquidity squeeze. And that's something like it's going to push Bitcoin way into the six figures and maybe some other coins too, because exactly what you said, there are, there's probably hundreds of thousands, okay, hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin IOUs out there yep. and they're not Bitcoin, actually Bitcoin, like the asset itself. And now you have an asset that you can actually audit, do proof of keys with gold. You can't do that. I don't know how much does it cost to mine gold? How much gold is there? How much gold is coming out right now? How much gold will there ever be? I don't know. And I'll never know. No one knows. 
Yeah, Ed considered the fact that there's gold on Mars and when yeah, Elon Musk ultimately gets us there is going to be like a whole bunch of supply of gold. So that's something to consider as well. Um, you, Nexo is one of the only companies and it's one of the reasons that we're doing this AMA is that you're very close with your community. Uh, we try to be, yeah. Tell, tell me about like the community so like I, I always I, I understand the the larger institutions what they're doing in the lending markets but but kind of like normies like me and me and you what are we doing are we are we bought are we like putting a hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin to then borrow for a house do you do you think you'll ever do type of principal and interest loans together down the road that you can do stuff like this Further down the road, right now, we are very happy with the type of products uh, uh, that we have. And people borrow for all sorts of reasons, from anything to go on a vacation, to buy a Tesla. We had a very nice thread on Twitter by a person who took out a loan to buy Tesla. Uh, and, you know, he gave his story. It was, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, very you know, we had Brock Pierce borrow against his Bitcoin very very early it was bitcoin was trading at around three thousand uh he took out a loan bought a property in central amsterdam an amazing flat which used to I be i stayed at that property Catholic. sorry you did what i stayed at that property thank you it's oh you did it's great it's isn't it yeah it's gorgeous yeah and he he bought that property taking out the loan and you know there was bitcoin was 3,000. Had he sold it, it would have been such a disaster. And now he has it both. He has the property, he has his Bitcoin, it has more than 10x. So it has financed itself, you know, and it is an incredible proposition, which more and more people come to realize. What's the future? Uh, what's the future? The future is uh, unpredictable. It's going to be volatile, but Nexo is here and it's got your back. We're going to keep on uh, building. We're very solid as a company. Uh, we are about to hit the 200 mark in terms of employees. We got 5 billion under management right now. Wow. We are working on some very interesting products, you know, uh, term deposits uh, for for a whole bunch of uh, different assets so that you can get out even more of your oh, assets. Like uh, we're looking, looking and hopefully be in a position to roll out uh, the, uh, the, the, the Nexo credit card to the U.S. And no uh, you <laughs> will be a direct uh, beneficiary of that. We're working on uh, bank acquisition uh, in Europe for a larger stake and also we're working with a fintech bank in uh, the u.s for you know a smaller stake there which will uh, you know under this is how we seeing, take over the world yeah exactly that's how we take this over we the world it. in a compliant manner <laughs> charlie you know this better than anyone else that you have to that take over the world in a compliant manner that needs to be a t-shirt take over the world Compliantly. Compliantly, yeah. <laughs> Compliantly, yeah. Yeah, we, we will do that. Uh, Tony, but, thank you so much for coming on this show. What were you going to say? Any I was, uh, I forgot what was I was going to say, but it probably had to do something with compliance, so not the best way to, uh, to end the show, but buy more Bitcoin ultimately is going to be good for you. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you for, for hiring 200. I mean, that's like 200 people get to wake up and go to sleep every day saying, I work in this amazing, amazing industry and amazing speed like that. That to me, the metric, I wish there was a way that we can see how many jobs we've created over the course of the year. No one over the course of 10 years. No one is. Yeah, ever, that should be on coal mar market cap, like the, the very yeah. first one above Tesla. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, because yeah. we are we are a, 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 we are a voting block. We can be a lobby group. We are an army. We are everything. We just the jobs that have been created this job. Like it's our whole economy. It's yeah. beautiful. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Anytime again, Charlie. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, we are good. That was a great show. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Charlie. And yeah, and when do you think it's going to be ready? It's a, Well, it went live. Oh, yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's we true. were live. I forgot we were live. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, be in touch soon. We had a, I'll tell you right now really quick. If I can see these stats, but we never went below.